Friday Night Fights, round number three. Recently, he's had two straight wins after the Ayala fight, but his last fight was against record-setting loser Reggie Strickland back in September. Teddy Atlas, set us up on Anthony Bonsante. For number one, for him to win tonight, use that persistent nagging jab. People would probably think Manfredo would be the one looking to jab and maybe having an advantage with that punch. Being here, probably want to box, and he may be faster than Bonsante, but believe me, but Santi's best weapon is that straight, never-ending left hand. It's a pain in the neck. Number two, press a bit, counter a bit. But Santi is sim simple, nothing fancy, but he's consistent, and he does a good job of mixing up boxing and being aggressive. That could confuse the younger Manfredo. And finally, number three, open up in flurries. When Bonsani feels he has you off bounds and vulnerable for even a second, he'll open up like a storm and rain punches on you, not giving you a chance to adjust and of course one of our colleagues now in the corner of Anthony Bonsante one of the reasons Bonsante came in at 152 pounds the boot camp type atmosphere set up by his new trainer Scott Ledoux his opponent is the pride of Providence you see Patriots starting wide receiver David Gibbons flanking Peter Manfredo he came in right at 154 pounds at 23 he's 10 years younger than Bonsante Peter's run his record of 20 and 0 he's had 20 fights in just over three years because as his promoter Jimmy Birchfield knows he's always ready to fight so we put him in there his last five starts off with the fight he had against the well past prime Frankie Randall. Teddy, what are we looking for from Peter Manfredo? Well, if Manfredo's gonna go to 21 and 0 and stay undefeated. Number one, take his jab away. This is your biggest and potentially toughest fight so far. And if you're going to win it, you better find a way to deal with and negate his always present left jab. Number two, avoid the uppercut on the inside. You have a habit of lying your head in the center and close, and he has a very effective right uppercut. That can give you problems. And number three, be steady down the stretch. He's older and more experienced and will try to press you and take charge in the late part of the fight. You must be consistent mentally and technically as the fight wears on. Both men have been classy and sporting during the buildup to this fight, but Manfredo was not shy in telling us, Teddy, that he doesn't feel Bonsante is at his level. He believes that he's at a point in his career where just going out and doing what he should do will make him a superstar. Well, you want a young fighter to believe that, but at the same time, you never want him to not be prepared and respectful of what his opponent's going to bring to the game. Shake hands. Good luck. Charles Dwyer, the referee, is scheduled for 12 rounds. Take a look at the ring experience between Manfredo and Bonsante. 165 total rounds for Bonsante to 101 for Manfredo. Of course, the age difference, 10 years. Well, the first thing, talking about that age difference, you touched on it already. The first thing that I look at as a possible big element in this fight is the weight. You said it, Bonsanti, the latest, lightest weight of his career, which is 30 fights long. He came in 152 pounds. Is he in great shape, or did he overdo it? We're going to have to watch for that. You see, if you don't see strength, if you see him fade a little bit in spots later on, then that might be the answer you overdid it. Otherwise, just great, great conditioning. And Fredo, of course, ready for the biggest fight of his career, coming in the light as he's been in over one and a half years. See the knockout ratio moments ago. Neither guy over 50%. Bonsanti, of course, has a new trainer in his corner. You talked about it, Joe. Our colleague, the former heavyweight fighter, Scott Ledoux, the first fighter that Scott has trained is Bonsanti. And Fredo trying to place that left hand to the body, and they trade in the middle of the ring. Good action here. Bonsante with a left. Straight right hand from Peter Manfredo chasing him back, and he just lost his mouthpiece. And the referee will wait for a break or a lull in the action to replace it. And here comes that lull. So Charles Dwyer will address the mouthpiece of Peter Manfredo. It's Manfredo's mouthpiece. Oh, nice to see the color coordination as Manfredo goes with the plum trunks and plum mouthpiece. You would expect, I think anyway, in scouting this, that Bonsanti will probably fall behind early because the quicker Manfredo will 
maneuver on the outside, but to slow up on time, he will look to apply pressure. That's going to be his game plan. And it takes time for that to slow down Manfredo and to be effective later on. And as I just said, you can lose early rounds doing that. No shock, no panic, but Bonsanti falls behind early on. You would expect Manfredo to do most of the boxing, but to pick his spots, control that center of the ring, to try to act like the younger man, the quicker man, there goes that now mouthpiece there goes again. again. Manfredo is having trouble keeping it in. It seemed like when he went to throw a punch, he went to snort out the breath a little bit. The mouthpiece went with it. Maybe maybe a new mouthpiece, maybe a new mouthpiece made for him that he's never used before. That would be a surprise if he's using a new mouthpiece in a big fight like this, having never used it before and tried it out before in a fight. I'll tell you right now, Teddy, that his father, Peter Manfredo Sr., has already pulled out a new mouthpiece, the replacement mouthpiece, and when we do get a break in the action, or maybe at the end of the first round, they're going to switch mouthpieces. He's already got it ready to go. You just said it pulled out a new one. Maybe really pulled out an old one. Pulled out the old mouthpiece that he used to move, used to replace the new one that maybe he's spit now. Again, Manfredo's fight plan is to pick spots, I believe. Use his quickness, use his youth. Pick spots, get in, get out. Try to keep Bonsanti, who he believes needs to be set to punch. Keep him a little bit off balance. Manfredo Bonsante, one out of 12 in the books. Miller Lite has one half the carbs of Bud Light, one third less carbs than Coors Light. Miller, Todd. I'm not done. And Miller Lite has fewer calories than both, while still tasting great. Miller, time's up. Furthermore... Stop speaking, please. No, you stop speaking. How come you won't let America hear the whole story? Whose pocket are you in? That's unacceptable. No, you're unacceptable. This whole thing is a travesty and a sham and a mockery. It's a travesty sham mockery. No making up words. Burger flickle. Choose great taste. There's less filling. Miller, good call. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Trey Wingo. The only thing better than seeing kids playing games is participating with them. For more information, visit TeamESPN.com and help kids get active. Undefeated Peter Manfredo coming out for round number two against the veteran Anthony Bonsante. A few weeks ago, Teddy, Peter Manfredo was part of a ceremony where the torch was literally passed from Vinny Paz to Manfredo. They actually had a torch, they passed it, and Providence has now adopted Manfredo as their guy, their boxer that's going to carry the pride into the future. Proud behind him here at all times. Lands a right hand. Bonsante comes firing back. Set to become Providence's next beloved boxer. He's a young man who's likable. He's a husband, a father, and a part-time electrician who's trying to better his family with success in the ring. You know, everybody expects the more experienced, older Bonsante to be the guy present for, especially with his new trainer, Scott Lodu, a hard-nosed heavyweight who always wanted to go one way, come forward initiate the action but i believe the as i said in the tips one of the unheralded things about bonsanti one of the things he does best is that left hand people don't notice it i don't know if he's going to use it tonight the way he usually uses it but he would hurt himself if he did if he only looked to press he's got a good straight accurate jab nothing fancy nothing flashy it's not larry holmes it's not muhammad ali but it's effective it's persistent it's consistent it's straight and it can really be a pain to the guy who's got to deal with it because where I've seen him use it, it never stops. Right now, I haven't seen it so far. Only landed one jab so far in this round. Now, for Manfredi to take that jab away, Manfredo to take that jab away, there's two ways to do it. Use your jab. Dominate with your jab. Take the opponents away from him. Or throw right hands over the jab, which Manfredo did earlier, getting a quicker right hand over the slower jab of Bonsanti. That can make the guy with a good jab hesitate. You can see a moment ago, Bonsanti looked for that uppercut. He likes to throw that uppercut, that right uppercut on the inside, and Manfredo could be a little vulnerable for it at times. 
just a minute ago, Bonsanti held with his left hand behind the neck of Manfredo and then tried to throw the right uppercut. That he's going to have to look out for that. Both guys are banging their heads in there a little bit. Don't be surprised if we start to see some cuts. Again, no surprise early on. Manfredo, the younger guy, I think getting the lead. I think he should get and must get a lead by moving and boxing. Bonsanti wants to wear him down, and it takes time and pressure to do that. It's important for Manfredo to get that early lead, feel good, feel confident, and if he has to deal with a charging Bonsanti down the stretch, they have a little margin to deal with that. Rough second round. Yeah, very close, hard round, early for Manfredo, Bonsanti starting to be effective later on. What you're gonna have to do in there is throw your combination well, as we listen in to our colleague and now the trainer of Anthony Bonsanti, Scott Ledoux, here's what Tony said Scott has brought to him. The big difference is he's able to get into the ring with me and work the pads. We probably go six, seven, eight rounds on the pads every night. And he also gets in there and spars with me. I mean, the guy can still move. I mean, the condition of the heavyweight right now, he can make a comeback and be a top contender. I mean, in fact, I'm... I told him, I said, give me six weeks, I'll have you down to 235 fighting for a world title. And yeah, Scott will be the first to tell you that 235 is in the rear view mirror, and his wife Carol, I think, would object to the thoughts of Tony Bonsani. Peter Manfredo, round number three. He's 20 and 0, the step up fight against Anthony Bonsante. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Manfredo in the burgundy and silver. Bonsante the black with white trim. Again, watch for two things. If you want something to concentrate out there to our great fans, I believe on the offensive side for Bonsante, look for that jab. Look for those spots, those floggers. If he gets a chance to open up with a large amount of punches, that's one of Bonsante's strengths and one of his things that he uses the experience to do, Joe. If he gets you a little bit off balance, He'll open him up with six, seven, eight, nine, ten punches before you get a chance to adjust. Look for that from Bonsanti. Look for the right uppercut inside. There it is. And look for that nagging jab. Does he have headsets on listening to you right now, Teddy? That was on, on cue right there. Much better work in the first minute of this third round from Bonsanti. Again, that right uppercut comes to the mind of Bonsanti. You can see it every time he gets in close. He's done his homework. Scott has done their homework. He knows that Manfredo is open to that uppercut by laying his head in the middle, inside. Again, it's important for Manfredo to get a lead early. Feel good, feel confident. The biggest fight of his career, more experienced guy in front of him. He's got to feel good, and he might need that lead to deal with Bonsanti, the experienced guy coming down the stretch. Good pace in this third round. Right hand comes in from Peter Manfredo, gets the reaction of the crowd, but more the same from Bonsanti as he returns fire with a flurry. And again, Manfredo better not put the earmuffs on too long and just stand there without moving his head. Because again, one of the strengths of Bonsanti is he will open up with a real fuselage of punches. He will open up with eight, nine, 10, 12, 14 punches if you give him that moment to do it. And he knows when to do it. And you would expect Manfredo, you would step to expect the fight plan, especially early, to use maybe his quickness, his youth, and box a little bit. Get off, get out, keep the more experienced Bonsanti a little bit off balance. But right now, looks like the fight is coming out in Manfredo, and he's just standing in front of Bonsanti a little bit, going after it. Well, we showed you Scott Ledoux in the corner of Bonsanti. Look who's joining us ringside, who's in the corner of Peter Manfredo tonight. You know this guy when he's wearing number 87 for the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots. 
emerging wide receiver David Gibbons. David, Joe Testor, Teddy How you doing? Teddy, good to be with you. Thank you. First of all, your connection to Peter Manfredo. You know, um, I've been watching Peter train for a little while. You know, I met him last year, about a year and a half ago. And, um, you know, he's a great fighter. You know, I grew up boxing all my life, and um, he happened to be one of the first guys in New England that I met that uh, was a, you know, pretty talented boxer. Have you ever done any of this training? Have you ever gotten in that uh, square circle then? I actually have. You know, I used, to, I used to box all my life, you know, uh, growing up from the age of about five years old. You know, I had to stop boxing about 16, 17 because, uh, you know, the football thing and track and a lot of different sports. But, you know, boxing is uh, one of my one of my uh, favorite sports, actually. It, it must help you not only physically but mentally. Because exactly. Sport mentally. you got to be mentally tough. You know, you got to be able to uh, block out, you know, all the surroundings. And, uh, you know, Peter's one of these guys that, you know, he, he's got great determination and great heart. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, I like to watch. How do you like his fight plan so far? His fight plan is going well. You know, I think uh, he, he might need to back up a little more and, um, you know, stick with his jab a little bit and, um, you know, just kind of move away from this guy. This guy's more of a, you know, a power boxer. And, um, and I think Peter needs to back up and use his technique a little more. Oh, look at this. Well, he's training right, right now. there. And Bonsante landed a right hand. Once again, that's two rounds in a row now where Bonsante has come out firing. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas joined by Super Bowl champion wide receiver David Gibbons. David, you grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, correct? I was born in Youngstown. I grew up in the Houston area. Okay, so you're originally from Youngstown, a good, good fight town there with Ray Mancini. Yes, sir. Yep. Now, we've noticed through the years, especially Teddy, so many NFL players and coaches are so attracted to boxing. Many comparisons to be had. Yeah, you know, it's a lot, a lot of discipline involved in boxing, which uh, compares to football. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough sport, just like football. And there's a lot of players out there, you know, all over the country that are um, pretty good competitors. You know, boxing is a very competitive sport. Franklin, Franklin, six. Of course, the challenges and comparisons of being hit over the middle by Ray Lewis or going toe to toe <laughs> in the ring with a pro fighter. Something <laughs> to think of there. David, we thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very Get much. Get back to work in that corner. With okay, yep. Peter okay, Manfredo. Yes, sir. Round number four, scheduled for 12. Teddy Bonsante, once again, early on in this fourth round, jumped out on Manfredo but pace has slowed just a bit becoming more tactical now the way Manfredo likes it halfway through this fourth round. There's that uppercut Teddy you talked about. If Bonsanti knows that it could be and has been an effective punch against Manfredo from the tapes. We touched on it. I touched on it again. Manfredo has been in with well chosen opponents. Has not been tested yet. Figures to be tested tonight. In a big step up in class. Left hand from Manfredo comes back with a right. See, there's a warning. I touched on it earlier. There's a warning. Good job by the referee for a little holding behind the head. To Bonsanti. Back to the jab goes Bonsanti. That jab, again, I said it earlier, and Bonsanti, I believe the most important tool that he has here tonight, he has to get it into the fight, has to use it more. And now you can see Charles Dwyer going to play an important role in this fight. Both fighters have been tying up and complaining about the tactics of each other. Manfredo and Bonsante just about a third of the way through. Looks like it's going to be a real good one tonight. Let's check in with Brian Kenny and Vinny Pat. Oh, so fired yeah. up now, huh? Oh, yeah. You see, but there's Bonsante again. We were just talking about this. A little outclassed and yet making this a fight. Maybe he's winning this fight, Vinny. Because, Brian, he's got a lot of will, the kid. He's got a lot of will. And I said before the fight, it's going to be a tough fight. He's got talent, but he's got a lot of will. But like I said in the beginning, and I still say it now, I think in the end, Peter Manfredo's going to have too much for him. He's getting that lead right in. What should he do to capitalize on that? It looks like Bonsanti isn't even seeing that lead right. What you, you didn't see, Peter Manfredo slipping that right hand, he's hitting him with a left hook to the body, and he's bringing it back to the head. If you notice, you'll be seeing that again. But uh, he's, Bonsanti's doing a lot of holding. I hope the referee takes a point yeah, away from After a while, it's disingenuous. When you hold, then you come back and say, okay, I'll touch gloves. Now, well, stop doing that when you're doing that. Yeah. Vinny Paz wants to take a point away on that, Joe and Teddy. We'll get back now. Very good main event. We figured it would be. It is indeed. Let's go back to Providence now. Joe and Teddy, our ringside. Guys. All right, thanks, Brian. Peter Manfredo reading himself for the fifth round. Teddy, let's take a look at what happened in that fourth round. Most right in there in the bottom right-hand corner. Do not give Bonsanti a chance to go offensive on you because he will open up 
with a lot of punches real quick, and he did right there. Manfredo went back to the ropes, tried to cover up, tried to pick his spots in there, but that's one of the strengths of Bonsanti. He'll open up on, with flurries real quick. Manfredo wearing the burgundy and silver tonight against Bonsante in the black with white trim. The punches in round four, you see the 28-19 edge for Manfredo. Power connects through four. He's up 74 to 55 over Bonsante. Both these fighters are very hard workers in the ring, also outside of the ring, balancing the heavy load in life. Bonsante works the overnight shift at Kmart's. He then runs in the morning, spars at night, and goes back into work for the graveyard shift. In fact, this past Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, he worked, then boarded the plane, and came here to fight. Plans on going back to Minnesota to go back to work Monday night. Manfredo, of course, a father to a little girl, tries to fit in his training schedule around his part-time work as an electrician and his wife's schedule. She works a 40-hour work week and their parenting responsibilities. So two hungry, good fighters here trying to balance their lives and show their stuff in the ring. See, right now, Manfredo, where he's getting a big break because he's looking to control the pace. He's looking to pick the spots, be the boss a little bit get the shots off from pick his spots. And by Bonsanti not using that nagging jab as I've seen him in the past, he's allowing Manfredo the time to pick those spots, the time to feel good, the time to keep himself together. There is a cut right on the top of the nose of Tony Bonsante that is opened up here in the fifth round. A little loose tape on the left glove of Bonsanti that might at some point of course, to stop any action for the referees to get that fixed. You're right, a little abrasion. Bonsante shakes it off. You know that left hand landed good then. But well, Bonsante sometimes, he's pretty simple. He likes to get shots off, and then his defense is his legs. Doesn't move his head a real lot, doesn't block a real lot. Does a decent job technically being pretty solid, but he likes to use those legs just to get out and get in. The problem is he goes out straight, and Manfredo early on was able to time Bonsanti going straight back. Look for Manfredo to look and pick up on that more if he can push Bonsanti straight back. Manfredo still targeting that body. Came in with a left hand moments ago. Bonsanti fights out of it. Well, hello. <laughs> You're all so beautiful. There's so many of you. I want to start you off. Yeah, I do. I do. I don't want to choose. Joy, you choose. Honey, huh? go on. I'll join you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> it's not a dream. <laughs> because now with 3.9% APR for 24 months on every Yamaha motorcycle and ATV, you don't have to choose. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> Tony, maybe it's your deodorant. Let's start over. This time, start with Right Guard Power Stripe, the only one with a stripe of extra odor fighters. Right Guard, start right and right. For the best protection against water damage, one name says it all. Thompson's Water Seal, waterproofer plus wood protector for the highest level of water protection guaranteed. Thompson's Water Seal and Thompson's Water Seal Advanced, the most powerful protection against water damage. Round number six, scheduled for 12 between Peter Manfredo, the unbeaten pride of Providence, against Anthony Bonsante. The punches for round number five, 115, 83 edge for Manfredo. See, these are the spots here in the center of the ring could tell the whole fight, especially in close round. Who controls that center of the ring? And that starts with the jab. Who jabs? Who's more consistent with it? Who's better with it? Jabs through five rounds. Manfredo, 23 out of 145. Bonsante, 18 out of 95. Joe and Teddy now joined by our colleague Scott Ledoux, tonight the trainer for Anthony Bonsante. Scott, what are you seeing in there? Well, I'll tell you what. Tony's going to pick up the pace now. He's in great shape. We have to take this fight the last half of the fight. We have to stop this guy. We yeah. know that. Yeah, We're Scott. not going to get a decision in his hometown. Well, Scott, we got a guy in the corner here giving us crap already. Well, Scott, I mentioned early on that you wouldn't be shocked. I don't think anyone would be shocked for Manfredo to get the early lead. 
and then for Bonsanti style to be to come on in the middle of the fight and down the stretch. Exactly. That's what our game plan is. We knew this guy would come on fresh, but they didn't realize how tough Tony was and one how quick he is. He can punch and he can work. He's in the best shape of his life. We're going to win this fight. You know, Scott, it's Teddy. You know, everybody's expecting Bonsanti, the more experienced guy, to press, to press, and to make it interesting down the stretch. But one of the things that I noticed about Bonsanti watching tight tapes is his jab is so good. He's got a jab that is, you know, it's not a scintillating jab, but it's an effective jab. Do you want to see him use it more? Yes, exactly. That's what we're trying to tell him. But get the jab going. Work behind it. Work behind that jab. Because I haven't seen the jab as much as you would think you'd want to see it with Bonsanti because to me, that is one of the strongest things he brings to a fight. Well, I know that, and he just, he's just not in his game yet, but we're going to get there in the next five rounds. Scott, thanks for your time. Good we'll luck, Catch Scott. up with you later. Just about halfway through this scheduled 12-rounder. Scott Ledoux, the trainer for Anthony Bonsante. Lead right hand from Manfredo. Manfredo using his quickness, using his youth, getting off quick. And then smothering Bonsanti, not allowing Bonsanti to use his experience and come back. Scott expressing major concerns of this fight going the distance to a decision in Manfredo's hometown. One of the concerns has to be the kind of fight that it is. For Bonsanti to use his advantages, his experience, maybe his mental toughness, he has to make it the kind of pace fight, the kind of grinded out fight that makes Manfredo start to fault a little bit, start to think a little bit. Well, I'm passing a few bills to my brother in Cleveland so he can pay his electric bill or else it's lights out. When it comes to sending and receiving money around the world, millions of loved ones rely on Western Union. I'm sending money to Africa to help with my son's school bills. Western Union serves 190 countries and offers a money-back guarantee. And with over 170,000 agent locations, there's got to be one near you. The money is guaranteed. I wish his grades were. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Welcome back to Providence, Rhode Island for Friday Night Fights. Small state, but with some big fights in the course of its history. Of course, our studio analyst tonight, Vinny Paz, had two championship fights here, but here's some others, Teddy. Well, there you got some good big fights, as it says, in a small state. Harold Gomes, our judge, one of our judges tonight, former junior lightweight champion, Terrific judge, Marvin Hager. Of course, marvelous Marvin. One of the greatest fighters of all time. Some people believe he's one of the top two or three middleweights of all time. Very versatile, the southpaw Marvin Hager. He could do it all. Some real good fighters from a small area. There's that jab going to work there from Bonsante. You see the power punches through round number six. Manfredo with a 109.74 edge. His trainer, Scott Ledoux, wanted him to pick up the pace in the sixth round. Actually, he had his low total for punches thrown, just throwing 44, landing 11, and now you can see there's a tape issue with Bonsante. No surprise, as we said very early in the first round, that Bonsante could fall behind because of the styles of the fight. My friend will be a little quicker. But now is the time that Bonsante must not fall behind anymore if he wants to get out of here with a win. Must pick it up. Must start to control these rounds and not allow Manfredo to have his way with the kind of fight he wants, which is right now to be left alone until he decides when he wants to go, until he picks the spots. And so far, Manfredo's been able to do that, then tie Bonsanti up on the inside. And Bonsanti and needs to be free. Side, yes, it is. Bonsanti needs to be free on the inside to make it the kind of fight a grinded out fight, a pressure fight, a fight where he can test the younger Manfredo and maybe, maybe make a falter down the stretch. But if he doesn't test him inside, doesn't make it that kind of fight, then going down the stretch will not be so difficult for Manfredo. Good, good. Peter Manfredo Sr. doing the work on the gloves there. You know, you'll see a lot of the commissions, they use that silver tape on the gloves for exactly that reason. They don't use it here. To put it on top of the white tape, it's a waterproof tape and it keeps the tape from coming unglued and stops it 
to fight from being broken up as it's been broken up twice this round. That's a good point, Teddy, because already now the right hand of Manfredo is starting to come loose, and it was just taped 10 seconds ago. Yeah, they need to use that silver duct tape that goes over the white tape. A lot of the commissions use it. Of course, they're not using it here. Again, it's waterproof. It keeps that white tape together. Doesn't allow the water to make it fall apart. Plus, I don't know about you as a handyman, Teddy, but who can't solve any problem with duct tape? You can do almost <laughs> anything, Joe. You can solve a lot of Build problems house. in the world with duct tape and a couple lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Round number seven, scheduled for 12. Lanzante, a lead right hand again. And Fredo scoring well here in round number seven. Again, you're scouting all the things you look for tendencies. We talked about some of them, and Fredo, you can hit him with the uppercut in the side, but for Bonsanti, it depends on his legs for defense. He's not out, he doesn't run around. That's the spot Bonsanti likes. You give him a moment to open up with a lot of quick punches, he will be all over you. Now, another warning. Yeah, but what an in inappropriate timing from Charles Dwyer. I, I didn't see it. Well, Teddy, here's the reality of the situation. Bonsante was in the midst of a flurry just about to set up an uppercut when Dwyer came in and separated. Yeah, I, I did not see the right. pause or the re. I mentioned earlier that Bonsante sometimes would put his left hand behind your neck on the inside, right. but there, he was on the And now head. here's the frustration yeah, from Tony Bonsante. And that's going to feed right into the referee here in a local venue now you're gonna see a lot of people are gonna start saying hey what's the referee doing is he siding with the local manfredo and you can see why people are gonna say that because of the warning for the holding before and now Bonsanti becoming a little unraveled this round and plus it's gonna be up to his corner to settle down why so grumpy mr frumpy that was the worst meeting this week no, we've had worse. You forgot the presentation. Yeah, but I brought the bag. You couldn't answer any of that question. Sometimes it's what's not said that's important. Let me show you something. Now, see, I didn't say something. Did you feel that? Why did we even come on this trip? $139 a week for any compact car at budget. For irresistible prices on irresistible cars, call 1-800-BUDGET-7 or visit budget.com. How do you keep a car from ending up like this? Try armor. Armor all protected. It does more than clean and shine. It protects. When it comes to athlete's foot, this is the latest. This isn't. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest prescription strength medicine available without a prescription. The latest cure, so ultra powerful. One use a day is all you need. Nothing's proven stronger or faster. Lotrimin Ultra. Keep it clean, guys. Bottom, on, right, right. bottom right hand corner. This is where the frustration starts for Bonsanti. Not the pulling taken away, but the warning starts right here. He opens up. He's got Manfredo on the ropes. He opens up with a flurry, which you would expect him to do. And then he pushes down a little bit, but more like to tie up and push down. Nothing real unusual there. And he gets a warning. Bonsanti gets frustrated. Later on in the round, picks Manfredo up. Doesn't slam him down, but gets frustrated, picks him up, and gets a point taken away after being frustrated for that push down in the corner that he didn't think he deserved. Tape on the right hand of Manfredo is a problem. Again, that'll be addressed from Charles Dwyer, but you just get the sense in this fight that something explosive could happen at any moment. You saw it moments ago, the punch numbers from that seventh round. Manfredo in the previous two rounds has a connect advantage of 41 to 20 over Bonsante. Hey. Hey. Time out, time out. Hey. Over there. Yeah. Hey. Right hand, second time it's been retaped. Keep working, baby. You're working well. And you see Peter Manfredo Sr. taking advantage with some added instructions. As Charles Dwyer told him to be quiet as they're addressing the tape. It took me a while to find you, but we're about to put you on. All right, thanks. Peter Manfredo, 20 and 0. Literally passed the torch. Vinny passed it to Manfredo a few weeks ago. He is the pride of Providence. 
Bonsante, a tough-nosed fighter from an iron town in Minnesota who's been working hard, came in at 152 pounds, the lightest of his career, trained by our colleague Scott Ledoux in a good main event here on Friday Night Fights. Again, tendencies. You look for tendencies, you take advantage of tendencies. Bonsanti defensively likes to use his legs. Doesn't run around the ring, but he steps in, he steps back to get away from the punches. But he steps back straight, and he's paid for that in some spots here with Manfredo following him when he goes straight back on the line and making him pay a little bit of a price by eating some leather. Bonsanti, there it is again. That's his defensive measure. He likes to go straight back. He likes to get in, go out, use his legs for defense. There's three lines of defense. You can block, you can move your head, you can use his legs. Bonsanti likes to use his legs by stepping out. Manfredo seems to be wise to it. Cut has opened up on the cheekbone of Anthony Bonsante, right under that right eye. Looks like it's under control. Inside work now, tying up again. Just a small abrasion, as you said, Joe, under the eye. No blood in the eye, so it should not really become a factor in this fight. A lot of rough housing in this fight, a lot of grappling. Of course, in the seventh round, Bonsante lost a point. In attendance tonight, the Sandman, Scotty Pemberton. Of course, you talk about fights of the year, Pacquiao Marquez. Boy, what an underrated fight of the year type fight he had with Omar Sheikha on Friday Night Fights back in January. And speaking of Scotty Pemberton, some of the sparring partners that Manfredo has benefited from being in with. How about the Sandman, Sucre Ray, and the Iceman, John Scully. Good veteran upper tier talent and that's benefited Manfredo. No, all different styles too. Pemberton, a big right hand puncher. You can get used to getting away from that right hand. Of course, Oliveira, a punching machine, never stops. You can get in real good condition with him. And Scully, a real veteran guy, he's fought everyone. Yeah, the Iceman, a real smart fighter, a young emerging trainer. Here's Scott Ledoux with Tony Bonsante. Take him out because you are in better shape, okay? Manfredo grew up idolizing Vinny Paz. He said he would imitate Paz, hit himself in the head with his gloves during training, and he feels he has the tools to take over that role of the best fighter in Providence. Round number nine, scheduled for 12. I don't know if it's too late, but Bonsanti seems to come out this round understanding that the jab's been missing. Again, I'm surprised, because to me that was the, not only an important thing in this fight, but it was important because it was the, one of the better assets I thought Bonsanti had was to use that nagging jab. And I thought that would flush the Manfredo, not allow him to have the pace he wanted, not allow him to be calm and be left alone and pick his spots, which for the most part, without the jab coming at him, Manfredo has been able to pick his spots, has been able to call the kind of fight he wanted. And one other thing missing, Joe, that I think has really hurt Bonsanti, the kind of style of fight that this is, Bonsanti needed on the inside to work to try to make it a tough fight, to try to make Manfredo start to doubt himself, to make him feel the pressure later in the fight. Bonsanti hasn't done that on the inside. He's allowed himself to be tied up on the inside. And he's taken that away from himself. Again, Bonsanti getting tied up on the inside, allowing himself to be tied up, not working, not making it the kind of fight that the younger Manfredo maybe would doubt himself, maybe would feel the pressure, maybe would falter a little bit, but you need to work inside to make that happen. Bonsanti, for the most part, has been negligent in that part of the fight. And here for the first time, Teddy, a round where for the first time we're not seeing him come forward. Let's take a look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard here. Note the seventh round, a 10-8 round with a point deduction of Bonsante. So 79-72. Scott Ledoux is worried about earning a decision here in Providence behind on, the, on your scorecard, at least right now. May get to the point where they got to go for broke. You know the important thing? Bonsante a bit bigger most of his career between middleweight, super middleweight, last two fights down to junior middleweight. But tonight, I thought he would be the stronger guy. But tonight, he comes in, his lowest of his career, you talked about it, 152 pounds. 
and you don't see that strength advantage on the inside. Manfredo's been able to be okay on the inside. Two left hands snapping back the head of Anthony Bonsante. Manfredo driving him back into the blue corner. Manfredo, smaller, half his career has been his middleweight, half his junior middleweight. But tonight, no strength advantage that you might think for Bontanti. You're watching Friday Night Fights presented by Miller White. Heading to round number 10. Hi, honey, how are you? Good, how are the kids? Oh, that's wonderful. No, no, I just think we're gonna make an early night of it. Yeah, Daddy's so tired, he's already asleep. Uh-huh. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, good night. Kisses. <laughs> Torque by a Tuesday on DVD. You're in my way. You messing with my good nature. Torque by a Tuesday on DVD. Now, when you stay at Ramada, you'll earn points towards the things you really want with the largest hotel rewards program ever. Trip Rewards. Think of it as a gazillion more reasons why Ramada is a very good place to be. Round number 10, scheduled for 12. Peter Manfredo, 20-0, the pride of Providence. That's where we are at the Rhode Island Convention Center. The jabs through round nine. Teddy, you touched on the fact that you wanted to see a good effort from Anthony Bonsante with the jab totals hasn't been what you wanted. No, it hasn't. And it hasn't been what Bonsante wanted either. No. Putting together some punches here to open up round 10. He can't do that. That's one of the things that he does well. He's not using the jab that he usually does well tonight. One of the things that he does well, Bonsante, is to open up and put flurries when you give him that opportunity. But to the credit of Manfredo, he's kept his hands up. And for the most part, he's blocked most of the punches right there. Bonsanti gets caught a clean counter left hook from Manfredo. Covered up real good. Bonsanti came in throwing those punches a little reckless, a little too far away. It's not a matter of just having the heart to throw the punch. You have to have the brain and the technique and the placement to throw the punch from the right position. He threw from too far away. Manfredo was able to get in a nice counter left hook and take away the aggression of Bonsanti. Joe and Teddy now joined by Peter Manfredo Sr., trainer to his son. Peter, how do you see it? Oh, I think we're winning every round. It's just that he's extremely sloppy, I and mean, we're breaking him down to the body. I mean, he's just doing nothing but holding. That's all, you know? Throwing a little bit here and there, but we're using a better jab. We're, we're, we're aggressive. We're hitting him with the better punches. Peter, are you surprised Bonsanti, the more experienced guy, got a reputation of being a tough guy, a hard-nosed guy, that he hasn't tried to do more working on the inside? Well, because I think my kid's a little fast one on the inside. Like, I see a little slip right out of there. I want to see him throw off of it. Has that been part of your plan to tie him up on the inside? No, they... I, I think it's part of his plan to tie that up. But uh, my plan, I wanted to win. You see, just leaning on him and grabbing on him. See, every time he gets... I'm trying not to make him get so close. Punch, oh, nice, nice call right there. I want to see him calling the This kid's got a good chin, though. I you know, that. Peter, everybody's talked about the weight. Bonsanti coming in the best shape of his life, lightest weight of his career, 152. But he seems to be wilting while your son seems to be stronger. Do you think maybe he left some in the gym? I don't know. I don't know what his training regimen was. He might have. But, uh, you know, my son's stronger because he puts some weight on when he, uh, the night after the weigh-in. You get the feeling that you can turn it on a little bit and maybe do something that nobody would expect. Maybe put Bonsanti on the floor. I think if he puts up, you know, four, three or four combinations together, quick, quick, he can stop him. I here's the question. Are you going to send your son out and take the chance to do that, or are you going to play it safe? Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make him go be reckless, but I am going to make him go, you know, put the pressure on. Good luck. Thank Peter you. Senior, thank you for your time. Strong round for Manfredo. Bonsante looked frustrated. I'd like to tell you a little story about my grandparents. They had a refrigerator that they knitted themselves out of yarn. It was small, not very cold, but it taught me a valuable lesson. Not all of us have king-sized refrigerators. And that's why Miller brings you the space-saving fridge pack. It proves once again that Miller is a beer of the people.
Plus, it's got this little lip here that keeps the beers from tumbling out. Two's great beer and great boxes. Miller, good call. Gateway'd like to reintroduce you to the home computer. It's our 310T desktop, and right now you can take one home for just $499.99. It's packed with the Intel Pentium 4 processor, so it's got plenty of power for the whole family, along with a big screen for kids' games and tons of storage for mom and dad's photos, all at a great price. In fact, BestStuff.com said our 310 series offers plenty of bang for the buck. So call Gateway today and get all you need for less than 500 bucks. Right-hand corner sliding in. Here's two lessons for those young fighters out there. Don't throw the right hand too far away. Don't pose after you punch because you'll get hit with a counter left hook that Peter Manfredo landed on the chin of Bonsanti. Scheduled for 12 rounds. This is round number 11. Peter Manfredo in the burgundy and silver. Tony Bonsante wearing the black with white trim. You see the jab numbers through 10 rounds. You know, talk about the ability of Bonsante to open up quick. To a lot of flourish. Great to throw you punches like he's doing or trying to do right there. But if you throw from too far away, you forget about the rule of the sweet science. You leave yourself wide open for counters as Bonsante did. As you saw in the replay opening this round. Bonsanti doesn't seem to have any strength left. The stronger man seemed to be the 23-year-old Manfredo, not the 33-year-old Bonsanti. Well, he touched so much on the weight coming in in his latest at 152, a natural middleweight and super middleweight. Maybe 54 just doesn't fit him, but yeah, truth be told, it's a 33-year-old against a 23-year-old. That plays into the equation. Even more the reason why it could be hurtful to take too much weight off sometimes. We don't know if that's the case. But it was one of the questions that I brought up very early in the fight. Was it a positive or a negative? The lightest weight of his career in 30 fights for Bonsanti. Most people would automatically say a positive. Looking now in the latest stages of the fight, we're not sure if it was a positive. Manfredo seems to want to show he's the stronger man. You know, right there, you can make a little argument that the referee might be a little bit more favorable. Nothing extreme, but maybe a little more favorable to the hometown kid, Joe. Because there you see Manfredo pushes Bonsanti, turns him around, and what does he do? He tells Bonsanti, don't, don't turn around. You know, doesn't even look at Manfredo to give him any kind of concern about any Ralph House tactics like he gave to Bonsanti. But don't mistake my comments in saying that that is what is important in this fight and what is steering this fight. Manfredo is handling this fight on his own. He's getting off first. He's negating Bonsanti from using his gritty tactics or his experience on the inside. And on the outside, Manfredo is usually there quicker, like that. With a nice right hand as Bonsanti reaches in from too far away once again. Peter Manfredo trying to finish strong. One round to go here in Providence. Now, this here, that's the drain plug. It lets the oil drain out to the pan. Remember, she's got a lot of mileage on her, but one day, she'll be all yours. <laughs> Help keep the family car in the family. Switch to Valvoline's Max Life at 75,000 miles. Its added ingredients help prevent wear on critical engine parts. After our naps, we'll flush the radiator. At 75,000, time to switch to Max Life. ESPN2 Friday Night Fight presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low car. Miller Lite. City Hall in Providence, Rhode Island. Maybe someday Peter Manfredi will stand on those steps and get the key to this city. We are at the Rhode Island Convention Center. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you. Been enjoying Vinny Paz in studio tonight with Brian Kenny. Take a look at the punch totals through round number 11 between Manfredo and Tony Bonsante. 232 to 145 landed edge. 
for Manfredo. Want to remind you, coming up next, classic boxing on ESPN2. Speaking of classic boxers, Teddy, this weekend, Roy Jones Jr., the rematch against Antonio Tarver. Always enjoy to hear your prediction. What do you got for us? Well, Roy Jones is that special, special fighter. We know he's a special talent, but if he's that special fighter that a lot of people think he is, then he will do what special fighters like Sugar Ray Robinson, all the great fighters in the past, have done in rematches. He'll come up with something to separate himself. He will shine in the rematch. And I believe that he thinks he's special, and he'll find a way to step it up in this rematch. And I think he was hurt by the loss of weight in the last fight. And I do think that Tarver was a little hesitant in that first fight. Wasn't sure that he could be as effective as he was. He's a talented fighter. He's one of our greatest amateurs of all time. And you could look at this fight and say, well, he's going to be more confident now. But when he finds out that Jones is a different kind of guy, we're going to see if Tarver is as confident as he is right now before the fight. I'm going to take Jones by decision. I'm with you on that. I like Jones by decision. Halfway through this 12th round, Bonsante searching for the answer. It's been a steady effort down the stretch of this fight by Peter Manfredo. See the grittiness now, the heart, the maturity, the experience. Bonsante. Of Bonsante just letting everything go. Is he ever? Left hand did come in. But no power on those punches. No, not much behind him, Teddy. And this loose take that might interfere with what Bon Santos doing again if the referee sees it. But there's Manfredo fighting his time a little bit. As Bon Santos was throwing all those punches, Manfredo kept his gloves up, was losing a part of the round, but he wasn't getting caught clean. And now Manfredo believes it's his chance. Oh, to and his a hand right up. hand comes in from Peter Manfredo, and the Rhode Island Civic Center is on their feet here. To the credit of Manfredo. When Bonsanti was dishing it out, Manfredo didn't panic. He was blocking most of it, biding his time, looking for his chance, and here it is. Another right hand over the top. The Good younger effort Manfredo. from both men in this 12th round, Teddy. The man, younger Manfredo looks to be the stronger guy physically here at the end, and he's trying to show it. At times, it was sloppy. It was rough. But a good effort from both Peter Manfredo and Bonsante. And Peter Manfredo, I think, passed his test tonight. Let's check in with Brian Kenny and Vinny Paz. All right, you get all riled up there. It's good stuff, Vinny. Woo, I love it. That's that. In Bonsante, a tough guy would not go away through that whole fight. So a nice level of progression fight for Peter Manfredo. A lot of will on Bonsante. But I told you, in the long run, Peter Manfredo would be too much for him. And that's just what happened. That's how the fight panned out. You know, the kid Bonsanti gave us a little bit in the beginning, and then little by little, the talent started yep. to fade in. All right, now that we got a chance to help before we get to the decision, we'll get back to Joe and Teddy in just a moment. But first, Vinny and I get to look at some highlights here. Miguel Cotto on the way up. And this, Vinny, I thought a good litmus test fight here because he's taking on Lovemore and Doe, a guy who just came off a very competitive fight with Sean Bay Mitchell, the number one contender at 140. And boy, Cotto is getting better and better. And Endo is good. For Cotto to look this good against a guy like Endo, he can fight. He was tested in this fight. We go now to round nine. Look at Endo. This is tough. This guy's wondering what he can do to get a break. I mean, imagine he's fighting Sean Bay Mitchell, who could be the best guy at 140 now. He's still waiting for Costia Zhu to come back. And now he runs into the up-and-comer. Miguel Cotto gets a unanimous decision. He is 20-0. He looks tremendous. Francisco Bajado on the move once again and active against Andre Eason, the guy we've seen before here on Friday Night Fights. Bajado still electrifying with his hands. Vinny. Bajado is just speed in motion. If there's such a term, speed and motion, <laughs> that's him. In fact, there is. Uh, now that there is, and watch this. You can see Bajado lets his hands go. He's really changed himself, though. He's much more in control of his shots now that he used to, he used to just go out and let it fly, Vinny. It seems like he's throwing precision haymakers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Look at this knockout shot again. Bajado still a special fighter and gets the knockout last weekend. Again, let's send it back out. We're going to talk Jones Tarver, get your prediction for the light heavyweight championship in a moment. First, though, we go back to Providence, Rhode Island and the decision. Joe? All right, thanks, Brian. Peter Manfredo, Anthony Bonsante finishing up 12 rounds from the Rhode Island Convention Center. Want to remind you, classic boxing coming up next on ESPN2. 
Total punches between Manfredo and Bonsante, 261 to 174. In terms of power shots, Manfredo, 216 to 138. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 119-108. Manfredo, for the official judges' scores, we head up to the ring to Joey Birchfield. Fight fans, we have you a decision from the Rhode Island Convention Center. Judge Stone scores the belt, 120 to 109. Judge Paleo scores the belt, 118 to 109. And Judge Sia Martino scores the belt, 120 to 107. Your winner by unanimous decision, and still, Peter Manfredo improves to 21 and 0. 33-year-old Anthony Bonsante now 24, 4 and 3. His trainer Scott Ledoux clapping for the effort from both Manfredo and Bonsante. So Peter Manfredo.